So a threat hunt is usually when we pull back a full data set, a whole suite of host-based forensics and some network-based forensics on a customer. And the point of it is to get a really good concrete picture of what's happening in a customer's environment in a snapshot in time. We do this not because we love pulling back data, but because we need to have everything in context in order to really be able to look into things that might be outliers. When you're looking at a bad guy, one or two little signs out of context aren't gonna give you a great amount of value. But when you can get a piece of data and you can pivot through that to all the various points of data and create a line and be like, this guy came in here through that and he went this way and that way, got his stuff and he got out or didn't get out, then we can really get a better picture because generally while detections are all well and good, their stuff rooted in what has happened in the past. Any newer emerging threats will not necessarily be caught in any of these detections. That's why we believe that hunts are the better way forward or a really great way to at least cover any blind sides that you might have. One of the intimidating things about starting a hunt is that it is a large data set. So one of the things you have to do is pare down the data. Going back to user behavior analytics and attack behavior analytics, that's one of the techniques we use to really pare down the data. Once we have a very good established idea of what is definitely good, absolutely, inequivocally good, we can pair that out, just pull it out, just pull it out and just start looking at the things that are deviations, looking at the things that could give us more value. When we perform these hunts, sometimes we'll come back with some gems too. For example, one time I was going through some hunt data and I kept seeing account creations. Every day at X time, we would see a new account being spawned and these were not Billy or Jane Doe account names. These were random strings of alphanumeric characters. This is the kind of thing that you would see an attacker tool perform. A bad guy would come in, he'd go through a user who clicks on something, and then he'll create a new account so he can better pivot through the network. Obviously, as soon as I saw that, I was in panic mode. I go in, I start looking for everything I can. Turns out that this was actually a technique that one of the equipment manufacturers would use to bypass a control called least privilege where the general staff might not have local admin rights to download or update their firmware. So this company would create a listener and then once it's ready, it would create a new account that has these privileges, go out, grab the update and bring it back and then everything looks great and nobody knows. Even though it turns out that there wasn't an attacker, we find more often than not that this is a good value add to the customer, letting them know what's happening in their environment.